Hello, everybody. Welcome. Welcome. I'm very happy to host this um, with this webinar with our friends from Stashaway. Um, the idea here is for all of you professionals out there working as, as, as freelancers, either on the side or as your main source of income, there's uh, so much to do and there's so many ways in which you can make the most of both the capabilities we offer to you guys in Workana and then we, and this is why of course we we have uh, our friends from stash away here and then how to make the most of your earnings so without further ado let me introduce here uh Matthias hey how are you Okay, hey, Alejandro, I'm good. Thanks so much for having us on. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. Yeah, please, the pleasure is all mine. Thank you for, for joining us. Mm. Um, so yeah, the idea I just mentioned, right? The idea is to um, teach, in a sense, to uh, our freelancers how to make the most of, of, of the, these services and tools, in a sense. That's so. Right. All right, all right, great, great. So very quickly, um, this is what we'll do. I'll share a presentation I have um, with some insights into what we do and some insights into how to make the most of Workana, you know, land more jobs and, and earn better income. Uh, short presentation, like 10, 15 minutes. And then I leave the floor for Matthias here to share um, how to about financial education and making the most of, of your earnings. So let me jump right to that. Share screen. All right. All right. <clears throat> Do feel free to ask any questions. If you're watching live, um, ask questions. We'll see them here. If you're watching this recording, um, but doing so on LinkedIn, um, you can still leave questions there, even if it's later in the month or whatever, and we'll be happy to address them. All right, so boosting your freelance career. So first of all, something worth mentioning is about context. There's, um, there's this very interesting report created by, by McKinsey about the future of work after COVID-19. Hopefully within sometime this year we'll still we'll see the end of the pandemic and and then you know what's work going to be like after this pandemic which changed everything right so just a few insights there are some very relevant trends here so for example remote work and and so basically working from home and it's interesting i'm, I'm home right now right and matthias i i think you are too and this would not have been the case uh, a couple of years ago. We would be hosting perhaps a live thing, but now everything's remote and digital. So here we are. Remote for, uh, work from home before the pandemic was at some level. It spiked during the pandemic. And after the pandemic, people is expected to go back to the office, but not in full, not to pre-pandemic levels. So work from home is here to stay. E-commerce, right, grew with the pandemic and is expected to keep on growing. E-commerce has been here for, for like a couple of decades and now uh, it's definitely ingrained in even the smallest uh, things we do or have. And automation and AI, it's, it's along the same lines, right? Uh, and also digitalization also spiking because many things now are virtual and there's the opportunity for efficiency. So one last uh, takeaway from this report, nine keys to becoming a future ready company. And number six is talent should be treated as scarcer than capital. This puts freelancers in a very spe special position because that gives you guys the ability to now more than ever have more opportunities and be able to choose to work on the best of them. So who are we? For those of you who, who are new or who are not part of our pool of freelancers, you are of course invited to join and sign up. But in a nutshell, who we are, we are a freelancing platform, right? We connect companies with on-demand talent and we connect 
freelancers with such companies and freelancers can make reliably an income through Orkana. We've been doing this for almost nine years. We launched in Latin America. I'm from Argentina in 2012. We are market leaders there. And then we've been here in Malaysia. I'm in Malaysia right now for over two years. We have our regional headquarters here in Kuala Lumpur. Even though today I'm home, uh, we do have an office here. And Seek, this is a public company from Australia. They are the owners of Job Street. They are our main investors. And worldwide, we have more than 3 million freelancers registered. So on-demand work, why does this make sense? And why is this making sense to work as a freelancer through Workana? On one hand, opportunities, right? You get access to all sorts of clients from small entrepreneurs to big corporations. There's a variety of projects to work on, IT and software development, digital marketing, design, all sorts of work that can be done digitally and remotely. So as I was just saying, everything we do revolves around re remote work, which is why it makes sense for our, our whole industry for companies to keep on working remotely even after the pandemic ends, as is expected. And we are remote ourselves, right? I, I should have mentioned that. Quick payments. You know how if you work as a freelancer on your own, sometimes the clients pay one month after you deliver or some others even 60 or 90 days after you deliver because of, um, of how their processes are. With Workana, you deliver work and you immediately have the money in your Workana account. And then within the few, first few days of the following month, you transfer that to your bank account. So there's no delays in that case. And because you're operating through Workana and we are mediating, your, your work and your money is protected. If you deliver what was promised, but for whatever reason, the client is reluctant to release the funds, we can mediate and have them released already because we have the money um, in the first place because we require escrow payments. So all of this, as I mentioned earlier, all of this makes uh, ma making an income through Orkana far more reliable as a freelancer than on your own. Now, with all of this context, let's jump straight into uh, the most interesting part of all of this presentation, which is how can you can land a job in Workana through filtering and, and crafting a great proposal. So first of all, I really encourage you to find the best projects. You, you know, freelancers in Workana have a limited amount of connects of credits to send proposals. So you're not supposed to be spamming every project out there because you will run out of credits, right? So you need to be picky. Identifying a good project entails taking a look at the description, at the client, right? A client who already completed projects through the platform is far more, it's, it's better than one that's brand new. A, a project with a thorough description uh, is better than a very short one, a project specifying the kinds of skills needed, the kind of deliverables expected, the kind of timelines expected um, is better than a project lacking all of that. So by simply taking your time to filter through the projects published and understanding which uh, are best, you have already better chances. Ask questions. I cannot stress this enough. This is very, very important. As a freelancer, when you see a project posted, through asking questions, you A, show interest in the actual project. And also, that gives you the opportunity to show your skills, right? If the project simply says, I need data entry, and you jump straight into, yeah, I can do that for you know a thousand or whatever. That's one thing. But if you manage to say, hey, I have experience in that in data entry, but I'm wondering, are you using Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets? Um, will this require handling a large database? Is it about copying information from some website? Through asking questions, you are on one hand gathering more information, but you're also showing that you know your stuff. You're 
displaying expertise, you are confirming the other party that you are knowledgeable on this. So asking questions serves two purposes, and it's a very, very important part of sending a proposal. In a proposal, make sure you include your background. It's just maybe a couple of lines, but mention, you know, um, previous work or studies or experiences. If you have them and they can be shown, include and show them examples of your previous work. If you're a software developer, samples of code are very valued. If you're a graphic designer, a portfolio showing your style, same goes for video creation. If you're a writer, links to social media content or articles you've written, uh, all of this is very, very valuable. And also, maybe it's just a couple of lines, but a few suggestions on how you would work on this, right? It depends on, on each project, but you could be saying, well, you know, for your, what I would suggest is going this way because based on my experience, I think doing A, B, and C is what works best. And you can propose milestones. So within the first week, I can deliver this. By week number three, I can have this other thing ready. And then by week four, I have wrapped up all of this. Again, all of this, A, helps you organize the, the work, but also uh, shows that you are uh, a knowledgeable, trustable, and organized professional. All of that is very, very valuable. And lastly, related to the milestone, a proposed deadline. Maybe the client included one in the posted project, maybe they didn't. Um, you know, you can still include an, an, a proposed deadline and say, I think I can have this ready one week from now. So that gives the client a clear overview of what working with you would be like. And coming soon, we'll have super bits. This, this is a new feature which was already rolled out to some profiles or some subcategories, but it will be slowly uh, rolled out to all of the users of Workana. So uh, sneak peek, Superbits will allow you to include some uh, additional deliverables, right? So if you're a graphic designer, you can say, hey, I can deliver your, your design work for X money. I can also give you the source files for an additional amount of money. I can do five additional revisions for an additional amount of money, just as an example. So that will help you also pro provide the client with a richer proposal. <clears throat> now, so to also give you an overview of what the market is looking like, uh, let me share with you some of the skills we're, we're seeing that are in high demand. There's many, so I won't go into details with all of this, but web and app development and graphic design are what we're seeing the most of. Web and app development, of course, is quite complex. You need to be a seasoned software developer for that. Same goes for graphic design as being a seasoned designer um, goes a long way. But there's also opportunities in writing, writing for blogs, writing for social media, for Instagram posts, for Facebook posts, digital advertising, graphic art, video, and interesting ones could also be data entry, translation, you know, if you're good with Bahasa, with Mandarin and English, and you can, you know, translate from one to the other. Data entry is highly sought after also. Uh, customer support and market research. These are simpler. Um, of course, they don't pay the same that app development, for example, but there's a nice volume of them and are simpler and the projects are shorter. Even the technical requirements are, are, are simpler and you don't need that much of a powerful laptop, for example. So for the new freelancers out there, these could be good ways of tapping into this way of, of work. These are some of the average hourly incomes or, or payments per project we've been seeing, depending of the, on the kind of of work done. Of course, as mentioned, IT and programming pays way more than um, virtual assistance or admin support, for example. Um, so hopefully this works as a guideline. With all of you freelancers registered to Workana, we'll be sharing this via email so you can take a look. And this is an infographic we've also shared before on LinkedIn, so you can also check that. And yeah, with all that being said, again, do feel free to ask any questions here on LinkedIn or YouTube or even right now if you're live or afterwards. And with all that being said, I wish you all the best of luck. Uh, keep tuned. 
we'll be posting these kinds of tips for freelancers. We have been doing so and we'll keep on doing so regularly for uh, for the registered freelancers out there. We want you to succeed. We want you to make the most of Workana and earn um, lots of money, basically. And then, and this is why, again, we are here with our friends from Stashaway. Making the most of your earnings is why um, uh, Matthias here uh, will has his bit of the presentation. He'll share how you can well make the most of your earnings and 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 have your finances working for you with Stashaway. So, Matthias, please take it away. I'll be here, of course, if you need me. But otherwise, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Alejandro. That was a um, very insightful presentation. You know, I think it really highlights during like times like these. Um, the, how important it is to actually be a lot self-sufficient, to really know know what you're doing, to have the tools at your fingertips, you know, to reach those kind of goals, whether it's um, through your freelance work as well as, you know, maximizing most of your earnings. So anyways, I'm um, well, glad you guys um, stayed on so far. And right now, um, if I'll just share my screen. Okay. So um, if everyone is able to see, basically. I don't think we're seeing your screen. Um, OK. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, should you found the see. button with share on the bottom? OK. Are you able to see it now? There you go. Yeah. Yeah. OK, great. All right. Then let's hop right into it. OK. So basically, we're just going to cover today, right, some personal finance basics. Um, as part of Stashaway's Academy series, we like to do these talks as often as we can, basically with the whole goal of trying to educate people as much about their finance as possible. You know, being in the um, working world, it's surprising even we've, we've done like talks at big companies, with Shell, you know, PwC, but we realize like people still have, um, do not really have an exact clear idea or roadmap on how to achieve their financial um, freedom in a way. So if you're a freelancer out there and you've got some uh, funds to you know, put aside for savings, basically just going to take you through a simple kind of presentation today on that. And basically, um, as an introduction, who am I? What do I do? My name is Matthias. And right now, I'm a client service executive at Stashaway as well as part of the business development partner. So partnering with firms on this. And right now, as part of our academy curriculum, I'm going to go to some of the personal finance basic. It's part of our beginner courses. You'll actually be able to find a lot more of these courses on our page as well as through our apps. First off, you know, um, it's always great to recap. Probably we've learned this through university and through our schooling years. You know, what is financial planning? You, financial planning is basically meeting your life goals through a systematic and disciplined arrangement of our personal finances. Um, we're all familiar with personal finance. Uh, you know, we, we take a look at our costs, how much we spend, our salary, and you know our savings. Whether it's saving for like going on a holiday, spending for some form of a uh, large spending in the future. Maybe it's a wedding, it's a car. Um, but how many of us actually have a very systematic way of doing it? Um, if I could illustrate, probably we we you know we we kind of dump our investments all together in one big basket, and it's. It's more of a hearsay thing when we hear our friends say, you know, hey, I'm investing in Bitcoin now. This is really good. Or I'm investing in this unit trust. Or I'm investing in this stock at this particular time. Um, but the real financial planning comes down to actually strategically planning those out and having a proper diversified portfolio, if you could say, which I'll be going into soon. Basically, there's this financial planning process. There'll be five steps. Determining your current financial situation, developing those financial goals, and implementing them through actions, identifying alternate courses, and then always coming back full circle to review and revise your financial plans from time to time. Okay, so you know, just go through. Maybe perhaps this is you. Perhaps this may not be you. But in an example, uh, we have Mark here, 32 year old. You can read through um, some of his life statistics. So how do we do this, right? By identifying his um, costs, his financial goals. We can see this. You know, he needs to make mature financial decisions on his expenses. Uh, we identify his expenses with, you know, his, uh, his children's education, his goals on retiring at 65, uh, property investing, and then 
the, on the side as well, insurance and wills. The first thing, you know, it's uh, to start off with our finance, right? We'll have to basically do this very, very simple thing, taking the inventory of our financial assets and liabilities. On one side, basically, all your assets, everything that um, is worth something to you, um, that is your house, car, your property, your savings in cash, savings in the stock, or anything else. And then you look at the things that uh, cost, basically. It's your property loans, your student loans, and your credit card debts. And you take a sum of that, and you basically find um, the things that you need to pay for, the things that you're also worth. And you can do this, actually, through manual accounting. Every expense you can. Some of you might prefer you know, a simple cash and pen just to write it down, looking through your receipts. How much does it cost you every month for your groceries? Uh, you can also work through an app. There's a lot of apps nowadays that are out there, which is very easy to calculate your net spending per month, how much you can save. And you can, you know, one thing is very helpful is to, at the end of the month, go through your bank statements. You'll be surprised. You could find a lot of items in there, which you can actually um, identify as probably a want rather than a need. And you can make your updates from there, perhaps cutting down on certain things. And you find that you have a little bit more left savings over the month. So all these expenses matter. In a case, I'll give several examples here, right? You know, if you had uh, one less coffee per day for 30 years, that would actually save you up to 166000 over the 30 years. You know, if you include investing that amount of money with compounded interest over time, and then, you know, 600 less per month for a car is for nine years, it's about 83000 ringgit. And then 500 per month less rent over 20 years is 227000 ringgit. All right. Um, you know, a big question we want to have is how can I have about 1 million ringgit to retire by 65? Uh, we've got this simple graph here. It's basically 490 ringgit at 25. You know, it's somewhere close to 1,000 ringgit savings per month at 35 and so on. Right. And then we've got our friend here, Albert Einstein. It's basically, compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. He who understands it earns it, and he who doesn't pays it. So it's really important, you know, um, putting aside your savings. Because and allowing compound interest to work for you, you know whether it's uh it's through market volatility, or through even the good times. All right then we go to our second point, right? Developing your financial goals. How do we prioritize our goals? So the first off, um, we're all very familiar with this paying off debt. Um, first thing first, you know the highest interest off, and then after that, once we've got that settled with, we go through with our developing the safety net. Basically, that's a cushion you want for at least you know, six to 12 months worth of income just saved up in case, um, for example, you could be out of a job, you may be um, you know, injured for a certain amount of time, you want to have that safety net for yourself. And once you've got that down, you can start to work towards your retirement. And then other goals come into play uh, you know, when you have actually got the savings for saving up for luxuries. You know, maybe it's buying a nice car, a fancy watch, taking the family out for a holiday. So basically, yeah, those are it, and enjoy those things afterwards. Let's go on to the point three, implementing your financial action plan. So here are some of the steps we're going to do, basically. The first one is to pick your goal for implementation, prioritizing it, as I mentioned earlier, reviewing the monthly budgeting from you know, your bank statements, your spending, your investments, and then choosing a preferred savings platform that you're actually comfortable with, that you, um, it's easy to use for it. And the easiest way, one of the things is actually when you choose a savings platform, you know, you choose one that you can have a recurring payment to so that it takes care of you. I find, you know, in an experience, we tend to spend first and then save later. And we realize we've only got a little bit to save over the end of the month. Um, the right way to do this is, in fact, if we would be receiving our salary and then saving most of it first and then only leaving ourselves a, a bit for amount for our necessities, that definitely keeps us um, on the right track especially if you really want to build up savings very quickly from the get-go. So it's making quick recurring payments as soon as you receive uh, any funds that come in. And then, you know, budgeting as well. The, the most important thing is simply just to start. Some people don't know where to start. You know, it's just starting. You can always revisit your financial plans later. You can always revise it, you know, whenever your, your bonuses change, whenever you have um, new liabilities in play, you can always come back to it. Right, and then identifying alternate source of actions, we always want to have a backup plan. You know, these are in the form of a will, advanced medical directive, you know, lasting powers of attorney, and life insurance as well, which we're not going to cover too much today because of the limited amount of time. So the last thing, right, reviewing the financial plan. 
as I covered just now, basically you can review it anytime you want. You know, when you've got, let's say, a life event happening on a yearly basis, your pay increase, pay decrease, unfortunately, if that happens. And also when life events happen, maybe you have a new child, so you're going to have to think about how much you'd like to save, basically, for the education in the future. Updating that data and, you know, celebrating every milestone is very important. Um, every time you've managed to implement the steps or every time you've reached a certain milestone, it's always a good time to actually um, be proud of yourself and celebrate those moments. All right, um, without further ado, right, uh, we've got a basically a special reward. So stay tuned for the end. Basically, a little um, humble promotion for our stash away, which is a tool. Basically, we've, we're here uh, since 2016 to empower people towards reaching their financial goals. We understand that as freelancers, you're going to be very busy as well with your own thing. Not everybody has time to pour over these um, small details on the stocks every day. You know, you got to have your time to work the craft that you like. So here's our app, basically, interface. We've got portfolios for you which are already diversified. We invest in US-denominated ETFs, exchange-traded funds, which is already the basket of stocks, assets, and bonds, commodities, everything inside. Those are chosen based on uh, studying the financial data analysts to make sure that we have the right stocks in the basket for the certain economical weather, you could say. And our portfolio is actually designed for certain risk levels that you're comfortable with, as well as your goals. So you can choose any goal. It will give you, suggest you the amount that you need to save each month. Right? Um, so we've gone through this as well, knowing yourself, your goals, and your coverage. Yep. So stash away, here it is. We've been there. We've actually just reached the 1 billion ringgit um, in management, 1 billion USD actually, in terms of assets under management. So definitely, and we're proud that a lot of people have trusted us with their wealth. And again, the app interface, you can create as many portfolios as you want. You can track your returns over time. It's in MYR and USD. And also, we it's very transparent. We actually show you the places that we, um, we invest your funds in. You can always go to the assets, asset allocation, look, take a look at the websites, which will actually bring you to the updated performance and more information on each and in every individual ETF that we're invested in. So security-wise, we're basically a licensed fund manager. We've got license from the Monetary Authority of Singapore, as well as the Securities Commission Malaysia. And Fees-wise, basically, we charge much, much less than most of the banks or other unit trusts between 0.2 and 0.8%, depending on the amount that you put in. There is no minimum balance, and you can make any withdrawals anytime. It's very flexible. There's no lockup period. And also, it allows you the key feature to dollar cost average into the market, regardless of the market price. Um, by depositing a fixed amount monthly, you'll be able to buy low or buy high either. So you're getting the best um, average market price at any time. Right. All right. Thanks for staying to the end. Basically, we have the, um, you know, as appreciation with Wakana for taking us on. Um, we're giving this special link to all of you for Wakana stuff as well as the freelancers. Up to 100,000 ringgit managed free for six months. You know, it's basically free investing. You can try us out, try out the portfolios and see how you like it. In any case, um, we'll be able to put this in the chat, the link, as well as if you're interested, we'll be able to send out emails with this link as well. So you can always just sign up. Um, don't worry, if you already have an account, you can contact our lovely customer support team and just tell them, you know, I'm, I'm part of Wakana and they'll be happy to manually add the promotion for you. Yep, so that's all for my part. Excellent, thank you, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, very, very insightful and interesting. So, uh, and thank you for sharing the promotion for uh, for both our staff and uh, our our freelancers. So, yes, we will share that via email um, in case in case you didn't manage to write it down. You can always pause the video, right, which is recorded. But also, we are sending it. And um, Matthias, very very insightful. I think it's great that there's no minimums and it's very clear the steps you're showing because it starts from the very beginning right and then understand this and from there you could be doing all of these other things and i think many people simply don't know much about that so simply showing them that it can be done and then showing them a very easy and convenient way of doing mm -hmm. it with stash away is great mm -hmm. 
So thank you very much, uh, Matthias. Thank you very much for everybody watching. Um, again, we'll be sending, this is recorded. So if you are not watching live, still feel free to ask questions. And uh, we'll also be sending this via email. So thank you very much. Thank you for everybody joining and stay safe. Take care. Take care, everybody. Thank you.